Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of my Noob to Pro series. Today I'm going to be covering how to gather all the basic resources you need to survive. Alright, so we're going to start off by gathering some food, but before I do that I need to explain the health and hunger bars. So over here is the hearts you have, that's your health, and over here are the drumsticks, which is your hunger bar. And in total, you have 10 drumsticks. But as you can see, I've already lost three, right here. And if I continue to lose them, which just happens over time, the longer I stay in this world without eating, the further this will go down. And when it gets to zero, I actually start taking damage. And by damage I mean my hearts will start to go down. And when my hearts go all the way down to nothing, I actually die, and I'm forced to click the respawn button, which brings you back to an approximate area of where you first logged into the world until you get a bed. Once you make a bed, then when you die, you will then respawn at the bed that you last slept at. So that's why getting a bed is a key part. That's why I'll be covering that in the next episode. So not quite this episode, but next episode, once I get some more resources, I'll be building a bed. So then if I do happen to die, at least I'll spawn back at the bed and not all the way randomly back where we first logged into the world. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and the hunger bar, once you get down to like three to two hunger bars or even four, it stops you from sprinting. So it's also very important to keep eating so then you can keep sprinting. And sprinting also makes your hunger deplete quicker. So if you're sprinting, your hunger will go down quicker. And also if your hunger gets down to a certain amount, it stops you from sprinting. So that's a little helpful tip. As you can see, I've already lost some hearts. A dodgy skeleton walked past and shot me in the eyeballs before I started, so that wasn't that fun. But let's jump down here, because if we're going to go get some food, there's a few main ways of making or getting food. You can either build a farm out of wheat or pumpkins or melons. There's tons of stuff, carrots. You can build farms of tons of different farmable items, but we don't have those resources with us at the moment. That'll be covered in a future episode. So we're just going to make ourselves a sword, just like that, two stone on top of a stick. This works with iron or gold or diamond to make different types of swords. Even wood will make me a wooden sword. I'll showcase that real quick. See, just like that. But we don't need wood because we've got stone. So let's just take all this out, put the sword on our hotbar down here, and let's go. We've got to go get some food before it turns night time again. Because I don't have any armor equipped. So fighting the enemies will be pretty hard with no armor. Let's just sword these pigs. Oh, I could use some more chicken as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, another pig. See you later, buddy. I'm sorry, but I need the food. Alright. You can actually make animal farms as well. If you were to trap two of these pigs in a little area and feed them, then they would actually make baby pigs. And the exact same thing happens with every animal. So you can make baby chickens, baby pigs, baby anything pretty much. And you can just keep breeding them and then kill them off, all the extra ones, to get food. But for now, I'm not going to be covering that. We're just killing them to grab ourselves some pork chops. Wow, a random block spawned up in the air over there. That's a bit odd. Maybe the terrain hasn't loaded in. The terrain hasn't loaded in, of course. That's pretty obvious. Oh, look what we have here. We might come back to this in a mining episode. I might even cover a bit of that today. Because we might be able to find some good resources down there. Let's just kill another pig. And we'll head... Oh, look, wow. Look at this ravine. There's a creeper down there. Probably don't want to go down there, but I can see some coal in the walls. You can tell the coal by the little um, black dots there. And also iron right there, which you can tell by that coloured dots. So we've got iron there, iron down there, and coal there. We're going to have to come back to this. Really soon, actually. Let's go back to our base. See, I can't sprint, because I'm on three pork chops. See the problem there, guys? I'm running out of food extremely quick, because I was sprinting everywhere. So let's head back to the base, and cook up some of this food. I can actually eat the food raw, but... It gives me less... Oh, what is that? Look at that thing over there. That is actually an armoured skeleton, it looks like. 
Let's go over look, see if we can get a bit closer. It is an armoured skeleton. So we, we don't have the gear to take him on at the moment. That's just a normal skeleton, but with gear on top of it. We'll come back and kill him soon. After I eat a bit, so I can actually sprint. That'll be good. What do you want to do? Is you want to put the raw meat up the top of the furnace. And then you want to put the charcoal or wood down the bottom. So, we're going to actually make some more charcoal real quick. Let's cook this shovel. Cook some of these sticks. Get ourselves some charcoal. And eight charcoal can actually cook a whole stack of stone. That's the measurement that I tend to work off. So I just I just tend to think of that when I'm cooking stuff. So I know this two charcoal will be able to cook this 16. Well, approximately anyway. That's how I work that out. Because I just assume, I just know that eight does a stack. So two should be able to do 16. Because a stack is of course 64. That's what I mean by that. So here we go, we've got some cooked pork chops. We'll just wait till a couple more of these cook. And we'll eat it up and you can watch my hunger bar go up. And when your hunger bar is full, it actually makes you regenerate health as well. So it's always good to be walking around in full hunger. Because then your health can actually regenerate. There we go. Three should do me for now. Let's eat this. There we go. You can look up on the wiki if you want to see how much each food actually heals. And now that I'm full, you can see that my health, my hearts are starting to regenerate. So that's good. That's really good actually. I am going to do something real quick and make another pickaxe. Because I like to always have a backup pickaxe on me. Just because if one of them dies, then I want to be able to keep going. I don't want to be stuck somewhere and be like, oh no, no pickaxe. I'm screwed. So always carry a backup pickaxe. Let's put that there. Let's go kill this thing. I normally wouldn't recommend it if you don't know what you're doing, but they are fairly easy to kill. The skeletons, you just need to jump around a lot. They tend to miss a couple arrows. Oh no, don't shoot me. No, no, I'm getting owned. I am getting absolutely demolished. I'm going to try and hide away from this skeleton. Dodge his arrows until I regenerate some more health. I was not expecting him to boss mode like that. Sometimes they're noobs, sometimes they're good. Let's try and get a sneak attack on him. Stand behind objects to stop them from shooting arrows at you. And then I'm, I'm going to try and hit him onto land. To make sure I don't get stuck in the water again. There we go. I got him now. Oh, he's still he's drilling me. We got him, guys. Mission accomplished. Let's destroy these dirt towers and I'll explain what I picked up. Okay, so it's turning night time, so I'm going to get into the safety of my house real quick to make sure I don't get jumped by too many enemies at the same time. And let's look at what we got. Gold boots. See, that's actually a rare drop. It was rare for him to spawn with armor, but it's even rarer for him to drop armor. So we can pick this up and put it here, or another way of equipping it is scrolling to it on your hotbar and then right-clicking. And as you can see, it equipped it there. And I got a ton of arrows in me. Not fun, I got a bit owned during that fight, but at least I killed him. And it's a bit too dangerous for me to go out there now, even with this armor. I want to explain how it works a bit. The armor bar is actually here. And the more armor you equip, the more this gets filled up. As you can see, I've only filled up half a shield at the moment, or half a chest plate. And the more defenses I get, the more armor I equipped, the higher this will go. And of course, the higher it is, the more percentage of damage gets blocked. So hopefully you understand that. If not, I'll try and explain that a bit further in future episodes when I get across to explaining armor. But for now, we can't make it to that iron and coal we saw. So I reckon the safe option is to start digging inside our own little base here. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Just like this. It's, well, it's a lot better to go find caverns. But it is a lot safer to do it like this. Because, as you can see, I can just light this up. And no monsters can spawn here anymore, so we're all good. Let's keep digging. Oh, and we found ourselves some coal. That didn't take too long. I'm just going to dig myself a little platform here. And if you see one coal, it usually means that a lot more are behind it or off to the side. Because they spawn in veins. So let's grab it all. We'll grab all the coal we can. 
And this is a better version of charcoal. Because of, tr of course the charcoal is wasting our wood supply. And we don't really want to do that. So of course coal's better. And I should put... I forgot to explain the XP bar. What a noob. Anyway, as you can see, I'm on level 3 right now. And I have one bar of XP. As this gets increased and hits the end, it'll level me up to level 4 and I'll start again. So let's do that. Each time I mine a piece of coal, you can see the XP bars slowly filling up. And when it gets to the end, it'll put me to level 4. Now, you may be thinking, what do you do with these enchants? Well, what do you do with these enchants? Well, I just gave it away. What you do with these XP levels is you get enchants. And you can enchant armor, books, tools. You can enchant a whole range of things. So there's no limits on that. And I'll, that'll be covered in future episodes, of course. My enchanting episode, I'll cover it a bit more. As you can see, I'm now level 4. Right there. Because the XP level got to the end and it leveled me up. At the moment, I can't spend these levels until I get an enchanting table. But that's alright. I'll have an enchanting table soon enough. Let's put all our coal in here. As you see, it worked out perfectly. The amount of charcoal I put in there cooked all of the food. And I did that just by the maths in my head. Going off 8 charcoal or 8 coal, it cooks 64 of any block. That's how I worked out that maths, just in my head. So that's tough. let's put this in there. And that'll do tons of stacks, because if 8 coal does a whole stack, 28 coal will do a lot. So we should be fine for a long time. We can actually cook up some chicken while we're here. And I guess that's pretty much it for this episode. There's a few little tips I want to give you guys to do with general overall gameplay. So just press escape, go options. And I like to turn the sound and music really far down, but that's because I'm recording. The main one I wanted to show you is brightness. While you're caving, I would suggest turning brightness all the way up to the max. I play with brightness on the max all the time, just because that's how I like it. And I like to be able to see even when it's dark. So if we hit this torch, see how it's dark, but I can still see easily. If my brightness wasn't turned up, it'd be really dark and you wouldn't be able to tell if there was some ores in there. So that's why I like to do that. And my second helpful tip is of course, remember how I said it's always good to have two pickaxes? Because they do die and they do get destroyed. Let's actually try and destroy this pickaxe. I'll just show you, because I really want to show you this example. Because even Minecraft pros don't know about this. So I really want to cover it this episode before I end it. Let's drill some of this away. Hit some of this away as well. So we'll use this pickaxe a bit. See how, oh, we found some iron while we're down here. Now this is turning into a good little spot. We'll walk over this cobblestone to pick it up. And let's grab this iron. Because if you didn't know already, iron is the next thing above stone. So of course we had wooden tools. And then we upgraded to stone tools. And then the next upgrade, or technically the next upgrade would be gold. But gold is far harder to find, and I would not suggest using gold tools at all. Because they get destroyed extremely quick. They have a really low durability, and they're not even that good. So I would not make any gold tools, guys, at all. The only thing I'd use gold for is golden apples, if you're on a multiplayer server, or to do with mine tracks and redstone type things, if you're on a single player world. So... Hopefully that helps you guys out so you don't waste the first gold that you find. Let's go ahead and cook up this iron. And I'll show you what it turns it into. So you put the iron up the top and it cooks it and turns it into iron ingots. And you can do this with iron and gold. So if we put gold up here, that would also be called, turned into gold ingots. But we're just turning this into iron ingots real quick. And I'll show you the durability thing. So if I click E... Now have a look at this durability. As you can see, there's a little green health bar below each item. And this one's pretty much brand new, so it's fully green. This one be has been used more than 50%, so it's half dead and it's in grey or brownish. And this one's been used about a quarter, so it's still like a darker green. But, when this gets all the way to nothing, the tool will actually disappear and totally disappear forever. So what I would suggest doing is merging your tools like this. You put two broken tools in, 
and then you can turn it into a brand new one. So with stone tools it's not that useful because it's best just to use them and get them destroyed. But when you start making diamond tools, you don't want to waste diamonds and just make them disappear. It's good to repair it before it breaks by doing that. So you can actually do that while pressing E and putting it in this crafting grid. And there we go, a brand new stone pickaxe, full durability, as soon as we hit a block the little health bar will come up. And that's a nice little tip that I'd give to everyone. Alrighty, so I've, sh I've actually got a nice, n another little tip to show you. Okay, go ahead and on your keyboard press F3, which brings up this thing, press it again, but you want to hold F3 down now. So while you're holding F3, then go ahead and press H on your keyboard. Okay, I have officially been holding F3, then pressed H. Press F3 again to get rid of that menu. And now you can see, it actually tells me the durability of my stuff. So the durability says 130 blocks left out of 131. If I hit another block, that'll turn down to 129 out of 131. And it also tells me the item code just above that. If you look above the, the number 131, it says the item code. That's mainly for server administrators and for cheating. If you wanted to spawn in the item, that would be the code. So that's a nice little tip that a lot of people didn't know. And I would suggest everyone activating that because it is the best possible thing. I always have it activated, guys, at all times. And just to make that clear, I'll type it in chat. Hold F3 and then press H. Just like that. Holding F3, then press H. And I just turned it off then, and now it only says stone pickaxe, stone shovel, stone axe. Pretty useless. So let's go ahead and press F3 and H again to turn that back on. And now it shows us the durability and the item code, which is extremely useful. And I'm so glad that I got to show you guys that, because I hate watching other people's recordings that don't have that turned on. It's actually raining outside. Let's not go out there. All right. Massive tips. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And next episode, we'll be covering a lot more. I'll show you what we can use this iron for next episode. We could use it for armor, more tools, better weapons. But you'll be seeing that next episode, guys. So make sure to chuck this video a like if you enjoyed it. And you really want to support the series. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future episodes. And I guess that's it, guys. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you later.